Okay, the reading for this week is the next part in our series on uh, classical Japanese civilization, culture, religion, philosophy. And today we will be reading an uh, excerpt from a famous uh, treatise by Kukai called The Indications of the Goals of the Three Teachings, or Sango Shiki in Japanese. And the kanji for that is uh, Mitsu no Osie, Kyo. So San Kyo, but read Sango. And Shiki, uh, I'll put the kanji to uh, this title below in the description, and you can read more about the uh, entire work um, below. It's a dialectic allegory written by Kukai in 797. It is Japan's oldest comparative ideological critique, and Kukai was 24, year old, 24 years old when he wrote this uh, as his debut work. And just very briefly, the uh, contents of the text is as follows. It's three volumes in length. It's written in a dialectic style, comparing and critiquing Confucianism, Taoism, and Buddhism. So it's a uh, critique of these three major uh, religions or philosophies of East Asia at th that existed at the time. And the conclusion, of course, is that Buddhism is the superior of the three. And... Uh, teachers from each school of thought, namely uh, there's four main characters in the work, uh, Kame Kotsuji, who is a sort of alter ego of Kukai himself, Tokaku, Kibo, and Kyobo are the four characters, and these four characters are each teachers from a different school of thought, and they attempt to educate a dissolute nephew, Tokaku. Okay, in, in volume one, uh, Kibo, who uh, Kibo lectures on Confucianism. He's a Confucianist who uh, defends Confucianism and argues uh, why uh, he gives his reasons uh, why he thinks Confucianism is superior, the, the superior of the three religions. In volume two, Kyobo Inji critiques Confucianism from a Taoist position. And finally, in volume three, Kame Kotsuji, Kukai's sort of alter ego, uh, stand in for Kukai. Uh, critiques Taoism from a Buddhist position, and his conclusion is that Buddhism is the superior philosophy. All right, um, so let me read now excerpts from uh, this work. Uh, let me begin first with an introduction to Kukai, and again, these worksheets are taken from uh, this somebody, uh, somebody at Columbia University compiled these uh, PDF worksheets. I'll provide the link to them in the description below. And the original source of the translation, once again, is Sources of Japanese Tradition, compiled by William Th Theodore de Berry and Donald Keane and George Tanabe and Paul Varley. This is Volume 1. I'll put a link to that work in the description below so you can purchase it and follow along with all these readings. All right, Kukai. Who is Kukai? Born in 774, died at uh, 835. So 774 to 835, so he lived during the um, latter part of the Nara period in the early part of the Heian period. And once again, if you haven't memorized the dates of the major Japanese era, uh, do so immediately. I'll put the dates below, as I always do in the description to this video. But to review very briefly, 710 to 814 is the Nara period. 794 to 1185 is the Heian period. Okay, so... He lived at the end of the Nara period, early part of the uh, Heian period. And Kukai, is, his uh, posthumous name was Kobo Daishi. So in Japan, a lot of times you find uh, people referring to him as Kobo Daishi, which literally means the great master of the extensive Dharma. And he was the founder of the Shingon sect, Okay, the true word. Literally, the kanji for it. Shingon is true word. So whenever you hear Kukai mentioned, think Shingon, the true word sect which is the uh, uh, esoteric uh, sect of Buddhism. So he's the founder of the Shingon, or true word, Japanese school of Buddhism, and is considered one of the most <coughs> important intellectual and cultural figures in Japan. Kukai traveled to China in the early Heian period, so in 804 he traveled to uh, China and went as far west as the Tang dynasty capital of Chang'an, which is uh, today the city of Xi'an, um, so he went to Chang'an, where he was introduced to the esoteric Buddhist tradition, ch the tradition of Shingon. Upon returning to, to Japan two years later, he founded a Shingon temple on Mount Koya, as well as Toji Temple in Kyoto. Okay, so Mount Koya is very important in the context of Shingon Buddhism. I'll put a link uh, to some more information about Koya below in the description. We'll review that in class. 
His main treatise is the Juju Shindon, the treatise of the stages of mind. All right, but today we'll be reading <coughs> excerpts from his debut work, uh, the Sango Shiki, Indications of the Goals of the Three Teachings, <coughs> and a School of Arts and Sciences. Okay, there's two excerpts here. Okay, starting with the Indications of the Goals of the Three Teachings, Sango Shiki, and, and we have the preface here to that work, which I'll read uh, in full. All right. My relatives and teachers opposed my entering the priesthood, saying that by doing so I would be unable to fulfill the five cardinal virtues, meaning the uh, five cardinal Confucian virtues, namely humaneness, ren, rightness, yi, ritual decorum, li, wisdom, zhi, and trustworthiness, jun. All right, those are the five Confucian virtues. Um, or accomplish the duties of loyalty and filial piety. Xiao is filial piety. You remember, loyalty is zhong in the Chinese. So let me read the sentence once more. <clears throat> my relatives and teachers opposed my entering the priesthood, saying that by doing so I would be unable to fulfill the five cardinal vir virtues and accomplish the duties of loyalty and filial piety. So his basically his relatives and teachers were against him becoming a Buddhist because they thought it would... Um, interfere with his Confucian pursuits and get in the way of his uh, more important duties. They regarded uh, Buddhism as a, as a distraction. I thought then, living beings are not of the same nature. There are birds which fly high in the sky and fish which sink low in the water. To guide different types of people, there are three teachings, Buddhism, Taoism, and Confucianism. Although their profoundness varies, they are still the teachings of the sages. If any individual chooses one, he does not necessarily repudiate loyalty and filial piety by doing so. So he does not necessarily repudiate loyalty, zhong, and filial piety, xiao, by doing so. So in other words, these uh, three uh, religions are all true and can exist <coughs> in harmony together, he's arguing. Even though, in his view, Buddhism, of course, is the superior of the three. Now I have a nephew who is depraved and indulges in hunting, wine, and women, and whose usual way of life consists of gambling and dissipation. So this is the uh, nephew who I mentioned at the outset of this video, who has fallen into dissipation, and then the three uh, teachers of the three major religions each argue um, how they are going to save him and why their religion is best suited uh, to the task. It is obvious that an unfavorable environment has caused him to lead this kind of life. What has induced me to write this story are the opposition of my relatives to become to my becoming a Buddhism a Buddhist and the behavior of this nephew. Okay, so that's the preface to that very long work. Perhaps at a future date we'll read the work in its entirety and uh, review all the uh, various arguments in favor of. Uh, defending the three major religions. But for now, that's all we have uh, uh, from this work, a short introduction to it. And the next excerpt that we have on this uh, PDF worksheet is a uh, passage from his essay, A School of Arts and, Sciente and Sciences. And when asked his view on establishing a school of arts and sciences in Japan, he responded as follows. My reply is... In the ancient capital of China, a school is set up in each ward to teach the young boys. In each prefecture, a school is maintained in order widely to educate the promise, uh, promising young students. Because of this, the capital is filled with talented young men and the nation is crowded with masters of the arts. In the capital of our country, however, there is only one government college and no local schools. As a result, sons of the poor have no opportunity to seek knowledge. Those who like to study but live a great distance from the college encounter great diffi difficulty traveling to and fro. Would it not be good then to establish this school to assist the uneducated? Okay, so he, w he <coughs> went to Tang uh, Dynasty, China, went to the city of Chang'an, and found that its education system was vastly superior to the one in Japan. So he came back to Japan and um, sought to improve the uh, education situation in his own country okay and finally we have three questions on the study guide here question number one what is kukai's view of human nature okay so based on these two short passages that we have um what do you think his view of human nature is uh question number two what 
does he think about the attitude in Japan in relation to China? So the attitude toward education, towards teaching, toward Buddhism, and so forth. And the, finally, what does Kukai say about the three teachings? All right, so it might be a bit difficult to answer that question based on this very short passage that we have. But from what we know from uh, this worksheet, what is his view on the three major philosophies or religions of East Asia at the time? Buddhism, Taoism, and Confucianism. All right, we'll discuss this a little in, uh, in some further depth in class, and hopefully we'll read some more uh, work by Kukai at a future date. All right, that is all for now. I will see you in class. Goodbye.